Hello everyone, my name is Katie. I am the Introverted Reader and today's video is going to be um, a review and I haven't done a review in a long time and it's actually a review on our February Introverted Reader Book Club Pick of the Month and I actually cheated a little bit because I actually started this in January. I like started it on like the 20th or 29th of January or something and before I knew it I was halfway through but I did finish it in February and that is A Curse So Dark and Lonely by Bridget Kemmer. This is a modern Beauty and the Beast retelling. We follow a couple of perspectives in this one, well two to be specific. Um, one of them is our main character Harper who is living in Washington with her brother. Um, their family got mixed up in a lot of, it mixed up with a lot of bad people and their dad just up and left. And they, the two of them are basically trying to pick up um, the pieces just like of his mess and trying to clean it up. And their mother is dying of cancer. It's just a bad time. And Harper also suffers from cerebral palsy. But um, she is not the type of person to let her to let that put her down. Like she just gets up and gets on with it, and I love her for it. The other perspective is Prince Ren. He lives in the magical land of Emberfall, and he is obvious. He is obviously like the beast character. He is cursed, and he's just been trapped, having to relive his eighteenth year over and over and over again. And basically, it's just him and this other guy called Grey, who is kind of like his guard. And Grey has the ability to cross over from their world into ours. So the story starts with Harper seeing Grey. And basically, she sees him trying to, like, capture this girl. And she's thinking to herself, no, I can't let that happen. But basically, what he's doing is he goes and gets girls from our world and brings them in to Emberfall so that Ren can maybe try and get them to fall in love with him. But it never, ever works. And he's just been cursed this way for so long. Um, so, yeah. So, Harper basically sees Grey trying to take this girl with him through to the other world. She doesn't really particularly like that. So, she goes over and, you know, I like fights him off the girl and then ends up going through herself. And that's where the story really 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 starts um overall i did really really like this book it is more of a character driven story i feel like rather than plot i mean the plot is there don't get me wrong um and like you you feel for the characters that's going along and what everything is going on especially with ren and the curse and everything um and like the state of his kingdom and stuff because as the book goes on it goes into all this like political sort of um storyline where Everyone in Emberfall thinks that the royal family has basically just up and left and forgotten about them and just left them to die basically and no one really likes like Ren anymore because they ne they you know they see him and they're all like well your father who's supposed to be the king and supposed to look after us up and left us so what the hell are you still here for like why do you bother sh showing your face and there's like this neighboring kingdom trying to attack them and stuff and Harper sort of gets mixed into all of this at first she well, at first she's trying her best to get back home because the enchantress that cursed Ran pops up every now and again. She, I, I did appreciate her, I suppose, because obviously there is the enchantress character in Beauty and the Beast. Um, and it was her curse that, you know, affected Ran in the first place. But if I'm being perfectly honest, she kind of just like stood in the background and, you know, like filed her nails I guess you know the male villains twilled their mustaches and she kind of stood in the background kind of like uh oh like like just sort of like oh I'm the enchantress I'm evil I can make your life a misery like you're mine you're my puppet and it's just it's just kind of like she kind of felt like I don't want to say a caricature but like stereotypical you know like your stereotypical sort of wicked witch like um I'll get you my pretty new little dog too do you know what I mean it kind of felt like that um Ren as a character I really really liked I did feel bad for him he was very very angsty he's a very very sad angsty boy I felt very bad for him you know throughout the whole thing you know but like in the end all the way through the story it feels like he has slowly but surely just given up and he just doesn't care what happens to him he's just sort of sunk into this depression and it's really Harper appearing in his life that he sort of gets himself together and tries to you know he wants to do what's best for his kingdom which is great um gray how do i feel about gray i like gray he's a good person um i feel like he 
he definitely all the way through this story definitely resents Ren a lot and a lot of times he sort of just bites his tongue and does what he's told but he frustrated me in the fact that it's just like you are not happy and Ren is constantly going on and on about how um about how sad he is about this curse and whatever like Grey is so angry <laughs> throughout this whole story and he never expresses it and that's kind of frustrating for me but all in all I did really love him and Ren and I really really did like their friendship and I really really loved Harper like like I said she suffers from cerebral palsy and she never ever lets that get her down whatsoever like she's just like watches well, because I walk with a limp you think I can't do anything well I'll show you and like she gets up and she goes horse riding and she's you know learning how to use a sword and learning how to use a bow and arrow like she's so wonderful and badass and she's just oh like and I'll tell you what I'm not, I'm not gonna give anything away but the ending of this was definitely not what I thought it was going to be and a lot of times now I've read a couple Beauty and the Beast retellings in my time and a lot of times I've said to you guys I don't like them because I never feel like the relationship between the Beauty character and the Beast character is developed enough for me um a lot of ones that I've read it's just been like instantly they're in love we're not here for that in this house like if you're gonna make me believe that this girl who was kidnapped and put into this castle isn't suffering from Stockholm Syndrome I'm going to need some evidence to back that up okay and you know Stockholm Syndrome is actually mentioned in this like Harper's having her own little inner monologue and she's just like could I love him or maybe like and then she sort of goes in I mean I've heard of Stockholm Syndrome and I know what that is but am I suffering from that right now like she kind of like she acknowledges it and she's just sort of processes and, and then in the end she's just sort of like am I in love with him? I don't know. I genuinely don't know. But she does grow to care for him an awful lot, which I I definitely love. Like the relationship in this was developed so well. And that's what I mean. Like it definitely is a character driven story rather than plot. Not that that's a bad thing. The plot was still there. But for me, I definitely feel like this was geared more towards the characters. But this time I didn't mind. <laughs> this time I didn't mind. Like even though it was character driven, I still had the plot to keep me going and keep the story going. Hence the amount of tabs that are in here, as you can see. Overall, I did really, really enjoy this book. I would probably give it um, four or maybe 3.5 out of five stars. Um, just, you know, like I said, I, I wasn't really feeling, um, the villain, the villain, um, and obviously sometimes the plot would be a little bit dry, um, but like other than that, I had a really, really great time. I really, really love the relationship between Ren and Harper. Um, I'm excited to read the sequel to see how it goes. And yeah, overall, I, I really, really liked it. Um, if you've read this, let me know how you enjoyed it. Do you agree? with what I said about the villain the same as me like did you feel like she was just kind of there you know like sharpening her nails and being like mo ha ha like that she kind of low-key felt like that for me and naming her Lilith I was like really <laughs> you're gonna name her Lilith okay um but all in all Curse of Dark and Lonely I really really enjoyed and I will definitely be reading the sequel because I have I recently bought the sequel a while ago so yeah that is my review on A Curse of Dark and Lonely by Bridget Cameron. Um, I hope you enjoyed watching. I hope I didn't give away too much. Like I tend to go off on tangents when I'm giving reviews so please. So I, I really hope I haven't ruined anything for you. But um, yeah, let me know if you have read this book, what you thought of it. Do you agree with anything I said? Do you disagree? Let's get a conversation going. Thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe to this channel if you're new. My Twitter and my Instagram are down below. Feel free to follow me. And yeah, I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye.